the coming mainstream aspect of gold. You know, trepping was bizarre. Uh, it was nuclear fallout bunkers uh, and tinfoil hats. Now everybody is doing some form of financial and other related uh, preparation for a turning in the, the God. And it's absolutely a sign of the time. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira, part of the outreach team of Silver Bullion here in Singapore, where we want to help you truly secure your wealth. Francis Hunt, the market sniper, joins us once again today. Francis built the Hunt Volatility Model, which offers traders a unique and technical approach to trading in all markets. His views on gold, silver, Bitcoin, crypto, geopolitics, and more have made him a favorite and sought-after speaker and guest. And we're delighted to have him join us once again today. It's time to saddle up and silver up for the market sniper. Francis, welcome back to SBTV. How are you doing? Great to be back. Thanks for having me on, Patrick. Glad to have you back on. It's been about three months or so when, uh, since we had you back on. and. Um, during that time, we, we saw gold knocking on that $2,000 level door multiple times, I think maybe five times before finally breaking through that 2000 level where resistance has sort of turned into support. In your view, what got gold to finally break down that $2,000 door? Yes, it was fascinating, wasn't it? Um, you may recall, in fact, I'm on the four hour on the gold chart right now. But if I just go up a little bit to the daily, we 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 we, we speak of uh, three taps uh, on the door and the fourth time through. You know, remember the saying once, twice, three times a lady. Uh, the lady comes on the fourth go and that's the break. Uh, you can see the test there, the test there and the test here and the failure to hold above and then each time we had an ever smaller pullback, you know, quite a big pullback there, a sizable one there, and a notably smaller one there, uh, at that third instance. And then round about here, you can see we literally were just coming and just kissing the 2K. And this was treating 2K now as support. And this dovetails with our uh, scenario where you've got a major move and your next rest is at uh, 2,900. So it's going to be very dominantly strong with in depending on your time frame if you're watching obviously on five minutes there'll be plenty of pullbacks so will there be on the hourly but if you look at if you look back at 2900 to when we were first breaking over here this is when we called the break with you patrick that was round about november we said it was a seminal moment that we've actually broken and everyone should be in a very strong uh, gold bias also going back to that four hourly so after the three times uh, and then four time a lady we also pointed out to many of our friends that follow us on the youtube channel the market sniper that this is a whole winding up so the red line was our descending capping grind line that was keeping the whole big continuation pattern a lid on it and then the 2k is a horizontal price level and you can see how you just just ran it uh, so you were sitting like a keel of a boat, but most of it was above uh, the price line. And this was a great setup for a, a long trade, which would have got you out there. And then we expect overperformance and you're now in the overperformance bit. So you could have closed 50% at that juncture and point uh, at that time. So yes, it's doing great. Uh, and it's part and parcel of, for me, a pretty consistent upside leg to just border of the 3k you remember 1927 as the high in 2011 they don't like it when the big round numbers fall particularly it hits too many headlines so there'll be a bit of a pause there but then further onwards and up we see seven and a half and then well beyond so this is all part of a big 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 move and i and i want to highlight again something we've said with you before the debt markets turned in 2020 so few people still conceptually grasp this they're sitting waiting for uh, a major pivot not that long ago banks were saying you could get seven cuts uh that's being priced in you know ridiculous stuff and i'm going who's going to be buying the debt because with the interest rate going down and with the proliferation of the debt you have to buy it up to make it more valuable for the rates to go down remember that seesaw i keep telling you everyone about so there isn't the appetite for debt. We've turned the cycle for debt. Um, Yellen, 
uh, wrote seven million new uh, seven trillion. Let me restate seven trillion in new treasuries in the final quarter of 2023. Seven trillion in new money. A lot of that's going on interest rates payments, on other things, immigration, uh, no doubt, and other popular policies, if I dare say. Um, and as a result, you have a debt problem. Everything in terms of bubble, it's not actually a. I'm not going to say the stock market is fairly priced. I'm not going to say Bitcoin, who knows what its value is, fairly priced or gold. What I'm going to say is currency is being absolutely destroyed and there is a debt bubble. This is the primary bubble. Too much fiat created, borrowed into existence. People need to keep the focus on that. So the, the inflation trade is uh, gold and it's going to make up for a great deal of lost time in the moves that I expect it to do to the upside. And that gold-silver ratio turned from its 128 high at the same moment as, in my opinion, the debt markets turned in that March 2020 uh, low in the rates and extreme valuation in the bond market. So keep focus on the real story, debt and fiat devaluation. And if I can add yesterday's CPI numbers, coming in red hot. So we've been the guy saying you're not going to get much in cuts, if any at all, from the very beginning when everyone was like pivot, pivot, pivot. We said no, the bond markets turned. Uh, and in actual fact, it took 40 years of escalator to get to its hyper overvalued state. And we've predicted relatively in a much shorter time, it's going to go down a far bunch further. And we've looked at TLT. We brought those charts up before with you and shown you how the long a portfolio and ETF of long debt is just being devalued. So the game, the game here is that debt devaluation is going to be very abrupt. And initially, when you get that hot CPI, you actually get gold and silver sell off. You even had Bitcoin sell off. But the longer term goal is it's first a slap in the face that actually galvanizes it even more for a harder charge. Because what ends up happening is those rate cuts aren't coming. The debt isn't going to go up in value. In actual fact, it's our opinion and our house view that you're going to face an interest rate spike, which is in fact a capitulation in valuation of debt on the basis of proliferation of debt and fiat in an ever escalating hyper, hyper parabola, let's just say, uh, on the basis of uh, the, the, way, the rate at which they're having to monetize interest payments. So their goal, inflation is policy. It's absolutely policy along with warfare, in my opinion, um, because they get to uh, devalue debt and they run the inflation hotter. So this CPI coming in hot is now taking the pressure off the Fed for quick cuts. They were committing to June as being likely. That could take it off. You've already had Larry Summers come out and say it would be unwise to do in June. We all know he's a bit of an outrider rider for the dark state, our friend Summers. Uh, and this just further evidence that people are not going to get. It's a donkey with a carrot, you know, being kept chasing for your interest rates cuts. You've been, you've been led a line. Um, in actual fact, the exact opposite is going to occur because they have to devalue debt. And with it, you may get a dollar spike. Yes, we're seeing the dollar getting stronger against other currencies. So there's two trading games and investing games, dollar long game. That hasn't been a popular message with many against the other fiats. But the difference is the anti fiats, the category is overall going to outperform all of them. So if you have a portfolio of trades or one or two trades, let's say I don't talk about portfolio of trades or investments, you could have uh, a dollar long against the Korean one, the Japanese yen and many of the Asians, which we see as particularly weak. And those will give you profits on the days that your gold and your silver uh, investments are pulling back. So that's one way to hedge it. But the end, in the end, gold and silver dominate even the dollar uh, and potentially Bitcoin and some of those cryptos too. If you're enjoying this interview with Francis Hunt and I, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And did you know that at Silver Bullion, there are six different types of accounts to fit your needs. To find out more, go to www.silverbullion.com.sg Click on the signups tab and choose from these six types of accounts or email me patrick at silverbullion.com.sg and I'll help to get you started. Yeah, you know, that that's a great point because I was going to ask you about the dollar. Um, the dollar index, I mean, we've seen it 
it's at about 105 ish for someone it has been there for for about a year in that range 100 to 105 and, and i was going to ask you how do we account for a dollar still holding fairly strong as we see the anti-dollar assets such as gold silver also move up very strong well it's something we've been saying very long time ago you know you're in a gold bull market when the dollar is going up and gold is going up with it um, if I just take uh, the chart here on the Dixie for you, we've spoken about the watermelon smile. There have been a lot of people that were pretty bearish uh, dollar. And more recently, our house take has been absolutely that you are in a rounding bottom. We had this capitulation below 100 there that was really abrupt. It was kind of a final capitulation. At that point, we thought, wow, it could run a lot lower. This rally was huge. You had a pullback. This overall is as i say that kind of toothy grin of our watermelon smile as we're calling it which is actually a basing pattern for dollar so unfortunately you know for those that want the dollar to die not when you're measuring it against the other same lepers in that same leper colony then you get all the cleanest shirts in the laundry i'm not such a big fan of that but the key thing is i don't think it's the cleanest shirt but it's going to go up more because it's the dominant shirt uh in the, in that sense because interest payments in dollars on debt and of course most international debt has been done in dollars so we need an ever proliferating aspect of dollars don't forget we've got the BRICS, we've got uh, russia de-dollarizing at the same time but as part of that failure the dollar actually funny enough because of the debt escalator that they've engineered and with ever increasing rates people are not going to be able to offshore nations are not going to be able to meet their dollar obligations because they'll have insufficient dollars to pay the interest on their dollar-based loans. So in spite of the de-dollarization, which is going on, which is one force, you're going to have this accelerated force. And that's why I think it's never been in their interest to keep the interest rates low. They need to devalue the debt. They need to keep a bid under the dollar. And they're going to do that by making it more expensive and people needing more dollars to pay, which is going to lean on the emerging uh, currencies and the the currently pretty sick Asian currencies and in fact the euro itself is not doing that well now against uh, the dollar as it comes so people will often be a bit confused by this how can the dollar go up it's part and parcel of the debt collapse the Fed will be the the tight the first and most aggressive tightener we saw the pressure come on the British pensions um when they didn't match the fed's rate of hiking when they started that so the fed will be the lead steer on hikes actually in my opinion and if the market gets disorderly on the debt don't forget they've been releasing a lot of their debt on the short end now which keeps the yield curve inversion uh, under the zero line as long as possible. The crisis comes when we break back up. So we should probably also show you the yield curve inversion because we're kissing a lot of topics here. This is a 10 versus a 2. I'll take it up to a weekly time frame for you. But you can see you're still below the blue line. The blue line uh, over here is uh, the zero line. So you are still in an inverted yield curve in situation. However, we're seeing a structure where it's winding up for a move towards the zero. Um, and when the Fed uh, keeps issuing short-term treasuries, not only are they creating more of it, they're creating a very early cliff when all those come back around and need refinancing because you have to give the money back at the end of the year if you only do borrowing for one year, two years, or any short duration. That quickly comes around, you've got to give the whole capital. Of course, they don't have it, so they just create new ones and they roll. So that adds to an additional amount of debt issuance. So they've gone from a long curve the average is dropping and dropping and ever more needs to be. It's a bit like you're, 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 you know, you're borrowing on credit cards and you get some that give you long term and then suddenly you're borrowing just for a day to pay somebody else. And then the next day you've got to pay the one that you borrowed from back. So you're running out of space here and you're going to have an absolute splurge of debt and that's going to have to be devalued and that's going to lead to an interest rate spike in our opinion. And the Fed will have to lead raising rates because I think they know it's coming, which is why they've been talking higher for longer and trying to warn people that were overbaking in um, 
big, deep, extensive cuts. And we've continued to say we don't believe it. We've been the no pivot. Everybody goes no landing and soft landing. We laugh at that. The hard landing is about a start on the no pivot or the low pivot uh, that's going to see subsequent rises coming. And that's going to be very, very uh, fatal to people with debt uh, or people that need to refinance cars, properties, etc., purchases and sales. You're going to have a cliff. No one's going to want to realize a capital loss on selling a house. Um, so they're going to try to stand on their price. There's not going to be enough buyers. Then there's going to be a panic. There's going to be unemployment and you're going to be a forced seller. That's when we start to get some of those asset prices down on property. And that's the contagion that's coming. Financially engineered instruments involved in an asset price will see devaluation of that asset price in an environment where people become forced sellers. Everyone will have, uh, there'll be a Mexican standoff where everyone will avoid trying to, to, to break the, the price that's been set for a Florida home of four bedroom standing. But if you lose your job, and you've only got a certain amount of equity and you've got to move, you become a forced seller. Otherwise, it goes to foreclosure and all the, the credit damage that that causes. So you're then going to see a breaking of the line. And that's when we start to get real assets uh, um, coming down. And that's when, wow, you know, it, there, there will be a, a bit of a disinflationary force in that. And that's one environment where gold can get pullbacks. Uh, people are to bear this in mind and that you'll get a bit of a rush into the dollar. So whilst we're very bearish debt, they can engineer with crises a small amount of bid because there's still the Pavlovian fear build bid that will see people go into debt, but never to the same scale. And more of it will go into gold. And of course, the BRICS nations that are de-dollarizing ever more so if they see an engineered crash coming. So that's quite a lot to um, to chat about in there. But it's looking great for gold. By the way, a final chart to show you, which I was desperate to show you. We, we specialize in what's called the HVF setup, the Hunt Volatility Funnel, which is actually a compression in price behavior that leads to a very, very impulsive break. And one thing uh, I'm going to show you here is the gold price divided by, so let's just grab our pen and highlight what we sh we're sharing here. This is gold. Yes, indeed. I'm dividing it by the CPI, however. I'm dividing it in its history by the CPI. And I can tell you that this is the chart you subsequently get. That will, for those that are thinking, am I late to the gold trade? You know, am I too late? I'm behind the curve, et cetera, et cetera. I'm here to tell you that you absolutely aren't. This move is just starting. And this valuation of gold relative to what the inflation is, it's going to start catching up in a big way. So you can see this uh, pattern structure that I've drawn for you is in one catch and i will go one step further and actually say when you include the 80s mega spike you actually have an even bigger one and the overall move is going to be even larger and you've only just broken and the the huge one including the 80 spike doesn't take you to 12 times the cpi average um, it takes you to 52. so you can you can multiply out from where we are now to 52 and see that gold is going to be hyper overperforming and there's going to be a period of additional catch up. So I'm super excited about the state of play of gold right now. Uh, it is doing everything now that it should be doing. There's that 80s chart. Uh, and as I say, if I just expand this, let's see if I can get this draw. This is a draw tool that all our community members get for drawing uh, setups by the way. Um, so let's see if I can get that big one on. There you go. And that'll show you the 52 number. This is, and this is already a log scale, by the way. Is it? Let me make damn sure I'm not talking nonsense. There it is. Now it is. Uh, I wasn't quite right. There you go. So that's now a log scale draw of 52 times, which is where we're at about seven and a half now. And we've just begun. So that is big. That is about eight or nine times the, the performance of what's going to be a very high inflation period. So gold is right where it needs to be. It is in a macro super setup. I am an uber bull. Never mind what everybody says about owning a Satoshi or one Bitcoin will make you wealthy. Uh, you, you have 10 kilos of gold and I don't think you're going to want for anything. Um, you know, and that's quite doable. And if you're starting smaller, you, you get 10 ounces uh, and or you get one tube. Uh, or you work up to one monster box. It's going to be it's going to be uh, 
a, a wealth preserving tool of great note and it's in the charts it's in the charts and in actual fact just if you take that single point over here we haven't yet run the high of 2021 in relative to cpi so the cpi has been more damaging in between all that so it's still early doors or the 80s and i'm absolutely expecting overshoot because when the market has been so suppressed for so long and you get incredibly volatile, fast moving breaks, the, you're going to overshoot as much as you undershot to the downside way back here in early 2000s, just post the dot com boom when metals weren't valued at all. And that's going to be super positive for miners in due course. Yeah, I'm pretty amazed with, with what you're showing me here or showing us here with, with gold with all that movement. And um, I got to ask about silver, though, because, you know, silver has been getting you know, a lot of thorns, you know, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and it's getting, you know, thorny again at 28, meaning there seems to be resistance all along the way. But with these moves with, with gold, where do you see silver going and that silver to gold ratio? Thank you for bringing me in on that, because it's not complete that we talk without getting that ever important discussion on uh, both silver and the silver gold uh, ratio. So... <laughs> when uh, gold was starting to move and silver was up on the high side i wasn't at all interested in silver i just was trading the gold of course i'm an investor in both gold and silver um what subsequently happened after this last rally is we had a really strong throwdown that's brought us back to the zone where it gets kind of interesting you'll note that uh, and we even divide this in half let me just change color there uh, the midpoint. If it's in the upper half, I'm not even thinking about silver. It smashed down super hard. And then just where it might have broken, it started to get a little bit bid. But we stay very high alert when it's in this range, just above our red dashed line that I'm um, re-underlining. Because that's the place you want to see it. And if it does this, that's going to be the big game. When it breaks that ascending, that basing ascending grind line that we've drawn, and, and you know, I've shown up with you many, many times now, Patrick, most of the time we're in this channel. And the only thing I can say is that day draws much, much closer, especially when we're this low, because yes, it might bounce and get support and go back up, and it's another cry wolf moment, or it eventually does a small little setup like this and throws it down. You can get a return move, but then we would expect a very strong move down to 65. That neckline on the big head and shoulder that we've shown you before, I can uh, put up just super quick. So we are we continually walking the line um, on this one, and it's now again a hyper alert moment. Yes, it can rebound and rally back into that zone. Then we can rest a little bit. It's not happening yet. While it's here, we have to stay super awake. We will be regularly in our community be dropping to hourlies and 15 minutes looking to see, is this just going to become a point where it gets bid back up? Or is it just a pause before it finally spills? And this time the wolf has come. And in that event, you want to be aggressively then pivoting to uh, silver over gold as your trade and then it will strongly outperform little reminder on that head and shoulder that we're talking about we see at least 32.8 that's the neckline at 65 on the solid red line and we see at least 32.8 and potentially a single digit uh for the gold silver ratio in an overshoot moment that i've said before with you and i will say again we'll probably have a four digit four digits um silver price so you probably could be in the thousands if you go to that 9.9 .9 gold silver ratio but certainly there will be bounces along the way i would expect 32 and i would expect 65 to be uh points where we get a bit of a rest but as you can see we still contained we still contained but we are testing again so we're watching closely uh if it starts to get momentum back up we can rest again but we watch closely every time because one of those will be the key rate. And we haven't changed this opinion. When everyone asks me about silver, it's the same answer. We need to break that channel. And when that happens, we'll break with real momentum. And that, as I say, after a small return move will run you to 65. I would expect us to pause a bit there and then go down again. That's when some of these bigger numbers start falling. And that's going to be disorderly. And that will probably, amazingly, be associated with Fed doing interest rate hikes 
People say, but how can you talk about gold going up with interest rate hikes? Have you noticed that when the CPI came in hot, and that means less cuts, that gold sold off, silver sold off, of course, Bitcoin as well sold off. Yes, initially they will. But what eventually happens is the loss of value in the debt, it becomes the preservation tool. So the whole model changes. It's no longer about, hey, this bond is paying me a better yield. It's like, I don't want that bond. It's going to go to zero. I want something that won't go to zero. What's the insurance policy of note? That becomes uh, gold. So the framing changes. The current framing is anything that could mean you don't get the same amount of cuts as expected, or you're actually going to have uh, rate rises that aren't expected, means actually gold and silver should go down. Generally, that's true in the initial instance, but as you work deeper into it, people realize this is an inflationary environment. This is also preservation, a capital preservation tool, no longer about what yield you get on capital, rather return of capital than return on capital. And that's how we're going to change. So I'm actually predicting, again, we've already having dollar go up and gold go up simultaneously. No one thought that's supposed to happen. That prediction has already occurred. We already have rates going up, but them spending like drunken sailors. Fiscal policy on one side of the fire, pouring fuel, and then rate policy uh, putting out the fire on the other end. And all that happens is the fire keeps raging, but marches to the left or right to, to wherever you go. Two predictions have now fallen. I'll give you a new one, and you can mark it for when it falls. Gold going up in an interest rate expectation higher and it could go into a parabola. Why? Capital, preservation. Francis, what else are you seeing with your charts in silver? Yes, Patrick, apart from that key triggering event for when silver starts to outperform gold, that was the gold-silver ratio, we can already see, though, that it has begun its journey, too, just after gold. So gold broke around about November, and it was in and around this point over here. Uh, gold then formed that winding up pattern that I drew for you. In a similar way, silver formed uh, not a winding up pattern, but a falling wedge, which also had a squeeze in it, like our winding pattern. But unlike uh, the gold that was holding the level above 2K, the silver was dipping its nose. But it set it up with a break, a pullback, and then a, a short interaction with that level, a very small pullback. And this triggering event that I uh, encircled there with blue for you, that is the beginning of its uh, clear breakout from this lengthy, lengthy, it was uh, October 20, uh, 2020 uh, that it made its high. Yes, it was marginally higher Wall Street bets, uh, but we didn't hold on to that very long. So this is now beginning of a fall of all these localized highs, and they're falling one by one, Patrick. Uh, if we look at them, these localized highs, they're all slowly getting taken out here. Uh, and you can see eventually we'll be at all time highs. There's only three more left to go. That's the Wall Street bets one, and that's that one. So we are winning now. We have broken out of this uh, structure. We've spoken many times before while we were still in it. You know, we were talking about the soft floor on 22, how it always comes to bounce here, most instances bar one, and now we are in breakout territory. So it is following gold, but as I mentioned before, the bungee cord with the, the four by four with gold, which represents gold, and the, the trailer stuffed with silver ounce bars is still stretching because gold is still the dominant one. However, we had a good spill down in the gold-silver ratio. We need that triggering event for the trailer to start actually catching up as it climbs the hill with the four by four, with all that tension in the bungee cord. That's still coming. But silver, again, in breakout, and that has recently happened, and this is a very good thing. Okay, yeah, I appreciate that, because when I was looking at the, the charts, I noticed that, I think it was back in uh, August of 2020, it hit 28, had some resistance, came back down, and then again, I think it was in May of uh, 2021, hit 28 came back down and now we're we're fiddling around with that $28 level again so I was wondering you know what is there anything with that 28 number Yes well funny enough I, d I could have said and didn't say but there's also a, a, a kind of a head and shoulder structure there as well which is a reversal so it's a left shoulder there and a head and sh a head and a right shoulder as well um it might be too much technical uh, for your guys. We may have done enough, but I, uh, this has a target in it as well, 
We've got a lot of things with targets. That's taking you to the 4550 range. I didn't mention targeting actually, probably should have. Uh, and this will generate a target as well uh, to the upside. So there's, there's good stuff coming for silver. Uh, there truly is. You're saying preservation, you're, you're saying inflation. And, and I think the average guy on the street, of course, he sees it, he feels it. And, and we're even seeing news from Costco selling some 200 million a month in gold is making rounds. And what does this say when a Walmart, when a Costco normally selling, let's just say, more budget friendly items becomes a player in the bullion industry? It says there's business. It says there's demand. These guys want to be in the game in any area that's hot where there's demand. There is demand. And, uh, you know, uh, bullion sales is a tight margins. It's a scale game. These guys already have a network of great scale. They're not going to leave potential profits on the table. And God knows what their buyers can do if they start securing futures. They may have a small margin benefit. They're going to be one a slice of that action. And that tells you that the everyday man who's price conscious uh, is probably noticing A, prices going up, and B, is probably aware enough that uh, gold is uh, protection for that. So it's absolutely the mainstream the, the coming mainstream aspect of gold. You know, prepping was bizarre. Uh, it was nuclear fallout bunkers and it was crackheads uh, and tinfoil hats. Now everybody is doing some form of financial and other related uh, preparation for a turning in the, the guard. And it's absolutely a sign of the time and it's another shoe to drop. Supermarket product, gold. Yeah. Uh, agree with that. Um, I think, you know, before, maybe just a few years back, people were thinking, you know, this was a tinfoil type of thing. But I think every man, every woman across the board is is really seeing what's going on and, and taking steps to to do something. And and you were just saying, you know, the, the rate cuts, I think they pushed it back to maybe September expectations of, of rate cuts. If that should happen, um, that is getting close to election time. Is it just going to be a short one, maybe for that election period, and we're going to see the rates come right back up again? Biden's going to get no gifts is my prediction. Here's why. We've recently done a YouTube, and it's probably uh, to run through all of these. I don't know if we'd have the time, but ETF for uh, boating and shipping, beautiful big time frame setup to go up. That means the costs of having things delivered. ETF for oil, gas, and exploration. Beautiful HVF setup going much higher, 50%. All of these targets are 50% and more and can have overperformance because they almost first time. E uh, ETF on miners uh, and exploration, 50% plus going higher. All upside setups with targeting from um, our specific methodology that we do, the Hunt Volatility Funnel. And red, these are pretty consistent. You are never not, uh, you're never 100 percent right, especially when you're talking about the future. But these are very high probability of occurring. Coffee, we've traded Arabica. Uh, it's going to its targets. It is melt up. This is a soft. So I've spoken about oils, energies, exploration, mining, delivery costs, shipping, uh, softs like coffee Arabica, coffee Robusta. Go have a look at that. Then there's the cocoa chart. Uh, which is in your chocolates and cacao and anything else uh, that you have. You should see that for a parabola. It looks like a, a crypto. That one's run early. So let me say to you, the inflation news is never going to get better. It's going to get worse. That's what's going to drive the interest rate super spike. Inflation is policy and really high inflation is needed for the devaluation of the epic rate of debt that is being uh, released. The only thing that happens is the billionaire class that owns assets get richer, and it's the perfect tool for crushing the middle classes, the lower middle, the working, and the poor. That's who you get destroyed by inflation. They will not be able to afford food. Uh, food stamps and food handouts are going to become deja vu. Uh, they're going to become commonplace. Uh, and of course, we've got all the cockroach food and the bugs food and the fake meat that Bill Gates, this is going to be their opportunity as well um, for the Frankenstein foods. So you're going to have uh, a lot of social aspects that are already waiting in the wings that are dovetailed to come into play with this epic increase in cost. Now, people think, geez, you're a bunch of bad news. Not if you take the right action. 
This is a polarizing event. One of our most famous videos we said is this is a citizen polarizing event. Those that understand what's coming and those that don't. Uh, and it's going to be totally polarizing. Make sure you're not part of the masses of poor waiting for UBI to buy your Frankenstein food with food stamps or tokens issued in central bank digital currencies for complying and getting every experimental medicine that they want to put on you. Uh, make sure you're independently wealthy so that you can uh, retain some elements of freedom. And if you do that, you're going to be a step beyond everyone else. Unfortunately, that could make envy and, you know, security also important. Uh, so, you know, you need to get community, you need to get a bit remote maybe, uh, and have the right kind of people around you. But wealth will be made. Extreme wealth is made in crises. That's the Chinese sign. What's crisis is also opportunity. And, you know, you don't have to do too much. Gold and silver will be a large part of that. A bit of agricultural land and a lot of other uh, positioning uh, and the right kind of neighbors that can serve you exceedingly well, um, along with some investments in security. This is, this is where we've been taken. The interest rate spike will crush those that have not prepared. It's absolutely uh, going to happen. And the, the currencies will collapse from the outside, as we've often said. Think of it like a village where the final king has got the wall around his castle and all the bigger currencies at least have some walls. And then some of the weakest currencies are outside the city walls. They're going to be the first to be killed by the barbarian horde of interest rate spikes. Uh, and then slowly, slowly, as the other layers collapse into the center of the onion, in fact, you get a spike. Everybody rushes through to the middle until eventually the middle collapses. But first it spikes up as everybody dashes out of it. But the key currency is not to run into the dollar. It's to get the super dollar. The super dollar is your precious metals of gold and silver. And when this chart releases this spacing ascending grind mine that we've intentionally done in one of the thickest lines on this chart, when that happens, you want to be in silver and it's going to move and it's going to move fast. But we're talking a lot about gold and silver here and rightfully so. We always hear this phrase, be your own bank, where you know, we're, we're told or we're suggested to get gold, silver, Bitcoin, platinum, things like that. How, how do we manage to, to have one foot in the financial system, current financial system, and one foot in the system that will be able to handle the breakdown of the current system? Yes, it's a very it's a very dichotomic type situation. You actually need to start moving your stuff. I, I, I refer to it sort of being an old rickety iron horse train um, and it's moving and it's stopping every now and then and moving and stopping. But eventually it goes off the cliff and simultaneous to it parallel running is this monorail, this hyper monorail alongside it that's stopping at the same places, but on a different track and what you have to do is actually need to be getting a lot of your stuff wealth uh across at each stop to the monorail where you've got a seat booked and a little bit of storage uh so that when the old train officially goes over the cliff it's not taking you or all your items with it and you actually have a chair already booked into the new system and i would say uh it's quite clear they want to push us into digitization and a surveillance uh, finance system with CBDC's uh, draconian overrule and a number of other things. So you're probably going to have to have to prepare to be far more self-reliant so that you are not ward of state in any way. Even if you own land and a farm, though, eventually they'll try and insist that you tokenize it and have an NFT, which means BlackRock with endless tokens can probably buy your NFT and thereby your farm. You want to try to avoid uh, being in that space. This is a time to start thinking about how you'll go dark, I'm afraid to say, because the next step up on the next crisis is going to be very intrusive from a secrecy, privacy uh, point of view. And, and, and it's going to be a case of certainly statist organizations. They may not let your neighbor always understand how much you earn, but certainly from a status point of view, they're going to know exactly what you have. And you may even start getting real time capital gains tax claims. Yellen once floated unrealized gains tax. Uh, so the sooner they start taxing you, the sooner they can start extracting. And of course, the sooner they re uh, reduce your compound growth uh, in certain areas. So what we do in our community, we've got an entire preserve your wealth system 
where you are far more efficient with tax and you're in places where capital gains and offboarding gains in crypto and CBDCs, which I think are part of that prison grid, but also will be inflated. So you want to take the wealth that goes with coin go up. They've got to, they've got to get the monorail trail to the same size and scale of this legacy old donkey horse, iron uh, horse type uh, train. So you, you're going to be part of the inflation where there's got to be deflation. Because remember, they don't want to lose their wealth either. So they are already seeing to it that all those assets that they'll be the new owners are being inflated up. So we're seeing flows out of that. Make sure you're part of this duality. You have to start walking the new path as well as uh, extracting yourself out of the old path. So it's quite important and we specialize that in our community. We can go into more details there. All right. In fact, what I think we'll do is I, I will um, wrap it up by by asking you how we can let people know where to follow you and learn about the products and services you provide. Yes, 100%. And thank you for that. Um, be elevated by this. It's a challenge. It's a, no doubt about it. There's a whole bunch of challenges in the things I've said. However, rise to challenges. Uh, it gives you a raison d'etre. That means a reason for existence, essentially, in French. Uh, and be a leader. Choose to be a leader. Understand it. Say, look, this is dark, but this is the world I've been built in. You could have been a 16-year-old storming a beach in Normandy into automatic gunfire. You're not. You've got to live as long as you are. Um, it's just a different kind of challenge. It's mental. It's a little bit psyop uh, And you've got to say, you know what? The best medicine for that is taking action towards preserving freedom and helping as many of those around me to have the best quality of life, build wealth, preserve wealth, and have space community that will resist these overarching dystopian tendencies. We, we can't say that's absolutely going to happen. I'm just warning that these are threats. Gold and silver are absolutely part of that. We've been waiting for this prediction in the pink to take place on the silver. It has begun. So absolutely uh, calling your local bullion dealer and getting uh, stacked up is 100% the right thing to do. Uh, and come and join us uh, and watch our market sniper. We go see the three ETFs that are going to make 50% plus and over performance. Build some wealth out of those. If you concur, we're non-advisory, remember. We are technical. In other words, we don't trust what they say. We trust what they do. The footprints in the sand are the truth. And we are trackers. And that's why we're the market sniper, the crypto sniper, and the reset sniper. And just pop over to the YouTube channel and follow those Twitter handles should you want more. Hey, man. Francis, you, I'm in the industry and you even lit a fire under my butt to get motivated and, and do more. So I, I can imagine the, the, appreciation, the, the appreciation people out there have for, for understanding what you're saying. And yes, it is not a negative thing. It's a very positive thing or at least positive information with positive things we can do. So I thank you for that. Yeah, there's a reason to take action. There's a real, you live in a world where there's a reason to take action. Go be a hero. Uh, go help others. It's a great time. It's a great time to be alive. In spite of everything I said, it's actually a great time to be alive. You've got a real challenge to work at. Um, and it's, it's where people stand up and show their spine. Uh, and I encourage everyone with the community around them to do exactly that. Uh, and let's get organized. Let's get organized and let's do this thing. And let's take on this obstacle course and let's smash it. What the hell? And help others in doing so. The value is in what service you can give to others. And if you go out with that mentality, you're going to be raising people up around them and there's going to be a lot of hanging heads. So they're going to need someone. I come alive when it gets, when we get into the 5% where it's getting gritty. That's where the real people need to stand up. I'm looking forward to you're coming over to the YouTube and having a look or just taking action locally in America, in Australia, wherever you are. This is going to be awesome and we're going to win it. Uh, and we just got to keep taking one step at a time each day, move a little bit more towards the goals, write things down. Um, and thanks for having me on, Patrick. Uh, always a pleasure. Hey, man, to all of that. No, thank you. I mean, hey, I'm ready to go. <laughs> but Francis, th thank you for this. And um, I, I really want to get you back on again in, in a shorter amount of time and, and run through some of these things again. And uh, let's just get the people motivated and, and our families in a good place. 100%. Bye for now. That was Francis Hunt sharing his views on precious metals and the economy. To see more of Francis's views and work, please go to www.themarketsniper.com. If you like this video, please do subscribe, share, and give it a thumbs up. 
all are greatly appreciated. Audio-only versions of this interview can be found on iTunes and Spotify.